Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, we're gonna go over the fifth gen Forerunner Overland build, all of the mods we've done up until this point. We're gonna look at each mod and we're gonna tally up the total cost of the mods as we go and hopefully give you an idea for your Overland build. There's something in this box. I don't want you to get too excited. It's only on loan. Toyota.com. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, what are you doing? Ah, uh, you know, just looking at some foreigner stuff on the computer, you know, the usual. What are you up to? Um, I don't know. Do you want to go shopping? Shopping, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing already. I'm looking at some new stuff for the fifth gen foreigner, but I'm also trying to decide whether or not I should. You know, be buying stuff for the 5th gen Forerunner or start saving for the 6th generation Forerunner. What do you think I should do? Whatever makes you happy, I guess. You know what? You got a really good point there. Whatever makes me happy. Whatever makes me happy. I'm gonna do both. It's so simple. Jeez, what's her problem? She's in a bad mood. All right, I'll start off by saying that this isn't a fully sponsored build. It's not something you'd see at SEMA. I didn't spend over $2,000 on a light bar, nor did I spend $7,000 on suspension. I will say though, I feel like this is a reliable, dependable build. I'd say a mid-budget build that's value oriented. And what I mean by value is, I mean, getting the best bang for buck or the best quality products at the best price point. So I feel like there's a lot of great products on this vehicle that are dependable, reliable, but they're not the most expensive. My suggestion would be when you're building a vehicle like this is invest in the memories or the experiences themselves and only the gear that you need to get those memories and experiences. Don't put off going out with your family and creating memories because you're trying to get that fancy $2,000 light bar. You probably don't need it. You know, what you really want to be building this vehicle for is the memories themselves and the experiences and adventures that it takes you on. So, you know, with that being said, let's jump into the build and let's go over all the different things that are on this vehicle. 90% of what I'm going to show you today, I've already created a video for on the channel. This whole build is on the channel. So if you're, you know, you're interested in say the fog lights, I've already done a install and review video for that. So there's more in-depth stuff on the channel. So check that out, but let's jump into the build and let's go over everything we've done to this vehicle. All right. Let's start off at the front of the vehicle here. This is the Body Armor Highline Winch Bumper. Um, this was only $650. This is a really good bargain if you're looking for a winch bumper. One of the best priced ones with the best reviews. It gives you recovery points, allows you to mount up a light bar and a winch to it. I have winched with it and it works flawlessly. And the powder coat is very durable, hasn't worn off in any spots. There's absolutely no rust on it, even in spots where it's actually rubbing a little bit on the plastic bumper. So really impressed with this. In here, I have a Rough Country light bar. This was like $160, so really good value. It's held up incredibly well. It's been on for over two years, and the lens is perfectly clear still, and it does put out some decent lumens. All right, and down here I have the Warren Evo 10S winch. This was $820. Warren makes some of the best winches, so I did splurge a little bit more here. Yeah, it seems to be holding up really well. No issues with it. Um, coming over here, we have the fog lights. These are made by Dow Dynamics. These are the SS3 Pros, I believe. So these are really nice fog lights. If you're going to get a light for your vehicle and you, you, know, you don't want to have to mount up a light bar or do anything, this I think is the best investment you can make. These were $420, so they are a bit pricey, but the light output is crazy and they still are street legal and the switch is already built in. It's in your vehicle, you just flip them on. You don't have to install a separate switch. You don't have to run any wires or anything like that. And the light output is incredible. So I'd highly recommend if you want any sort of light mod and you don't want to do any of your own wiring or anything, these are a great choice. All right, so for the headlights here, I didn't replace the whole housing. Um, with an aftermarket one and spend like two thousand dollars i just upgraded the bulbs to led i put last fits bulbs in here these were about 175 dollars us and they are extremely bright a little too bright where i have to actually aim them down quite far to not get flashed this is kind of unfortunate actually because what i find is in order to not get flashed and annoy people i have to aim them down to a point where they're not really benefiting me so having that extra light really isn't a benefit so 
you know, would I put these in the vehicle? I mean, if you really don't mind bugging people and blinding them, then they're great lights. It, it, you know, if you're concerned about that, maybe don't get them. All right, so coming up here, I have the Dow Dynamic ditch lights. These are the SS3 Sports. So the fog lights were the SS3 Pros. So you have different levels. You have the Sport, Pro, and Max. So these are the, the lower end, I guess, of the light output with being the Sport, but for ditch lights, they're satisfactory. They put out enough lumens. These are actually $340 US. So, you know, I'm really impressed with these. You can't go wrong with Dive Dynamics. And just like my fog lights, they also have a cool amber backlit function. So they're kind of neat if you want to flip those on. But yeah, that's what we got for ditch lights. The install is really nice. The brackets are super solid. They don't move at all. Um, that's one of the things I've heard for ditch lights. And one of the drawbacks to a lot of them is the other manufacturers will make cheap mounts. So they actually shake on the trail. And so you get this light kind of flashing all over the place. So these don't do that. They're incredibly good mounts and really happy with these ditch lights. All right, so coming down to the wheels here, we have the Icon Rebound wheels. I really like these wheels because they were zero offset, the correct bolt pattern. Um, and they just match the vehicle nicely. I like this kind of gray color with the gray vehicle. Although as time has gone on, I kind of wish I went with more of a flat black color. They also come in flat black and they also come in bronze. The Icon Rebound wheels were $330 each prior to tax. So for five of these, it came to $1,650. I have the Falcon Well Peak AT4Ws. I've had the AT3Ws prior to that. Yeah, these are a little bit of a heavy tire, but all the specs are absolutely incredible with these tires. So I'm really happy with them. They seem to perform incredibly well in the rain, snow, and pretty decent off-road as well. For the Falcon Wild Peak AT4Ws, I spent $1,750, I believe, for five of them. Under these wheels, we have the Power Stop brake package, front and back, cross-drilled slotted rotors. I paid $450 for these brakes. Super happy with them. The brakes perform really well, especially in hot conditions where brakes would overheat in an overloaded vehicle. In here for suspension, I have the JBA upper control arms. That allowed me to get enough caster to clear these larger tires. These are 285-7017s. The JBA upper control arms, I spent $500 for two. This seemed to be the best value and they've held up incredibly well. Um, they have incredible reviews online. I know some of the other upper control arms, the joints keep going and they've had all kinds of other issues pop up. I think the SPCs, that was an issue with those. These were super reliable, easy to maintain, no issues there. And for suspension, I have the Old Man Emu suspension with the nitro charger shocks. This was one of the first mods I did and you know, would I have gotten this again? This is super durable, super reliable, haven't had any issues with it. It's been incredibly good. One of the things I don't like though is that it provides a bit of a rough uh, ride on the road. You know, I may have went with Dobinsons or, you know, Kings. I may still upgrade to Kings, not too sure yet. For the Old Man Emu lift, it was $1,100, so a great value orientated lift that won't break the bank. So coming to the side of the vehicle here, we have the Metal Tech 4x4 rock sliders. These are angled rock sliders. I think these run $1,260. So these are super pricey rock sliders, but they are pretty thick steel. They're really heavy duty. The one thing I don't like about them is they don't seem to wrap or clip around the frame rail. So I don't know if they'll flex more than the other ones, but um, yeah, really durable rock sliders. They're full steel and just very beefy. Underneath, I have RCI skid plates. I have a transmission and transfer case skid plate. I bought these used as well. So I got a really good deal on them, but they were highly oxidized. So I actually went in and resurfaced them. I don't know why I did that. They're under the vehicle, nobody can see them. And then I also tested them to see you know, if they were bulletproof. And I can assure you, these sliders, even being aluminum, they are bulletproof. So those skid plates are $650 for the transfer case and transmission skid plate. So coming up to the top here, we have the Prinsu roof rack. I'm super happy with this roof rack. It is the full length. It comes in at $1,100 US and it holds our really heavy rooftop tent quite well and we get the whole family up there. So I think our rooftop tent weighs about 200 pounds and then there's me, my wife, our little guy, our dog. We all sleep up there. No issues with this roof rack, handles the weight great. The rooftop tent we have is the Thule Tipui Atuna 4. I don't have it on there right now, but it is a massive rooftop tent and we needed that because the whole family's up there. That rooftop tent comes in at about $2,300 US and we love it. It's super comfortable, super reliable. 
you know, you can tell the material is very durable. It is a little bit big and bulky on the roof, but we needed something that was going to hold the whole family and be massive. So it works out quite well. Mounted to the Prinsu rack, we have the Prinsu quick release brackets for our awning. Those were $180 and the awning itself was $690. This is the ARB Touring 8 feet 2 inch awning so this awning has got really good reviews online has that led strip built into it for lighting which plugs into a cigarette lighter um, and it seems like it's really good so really happy with this whole setup up here and it's all relatively affordable stuff all right so coming to the back here we have the coastal off-road dual swing out rear bumper kit this is a kit that you build yourself so um, it's fifteen hundred dollars for the kit us I did weld it up myself. I probably spent about an extra $300 on paint to coat it and also just some, some stuff like sanding strips and um, welding rod and stuff like that to actually put it together. So uh, that was about $1,800 total for this bumper. On the bumper, we have these water and gas cans. These things aren't cheap. I was surprised they're $100 each, so $200 for these cans on the back. I'm sure you can find a better deal out there. But yeah, that's what I paid for those. Um, this bag was about $50. This, you can get trash -a -roos. I like this one by Rhino USA. It has really good reviews. It's very durable and it's very large. Um, back here, we just have some traction boards. These are, I don't think they were over $50 US. So when you do put a steel bumper on the back of your fifth gen foreigner, you are covering up your reverse camera and your license plate. So you do have to remount your license plate in a new location, put a light on to make it legal. And you also need to relocate your camera if you wanna be able to see what's behind you. Um, so the relocation kit for the camera and the license plate came to about $200. Let's jump into the interior of the vehicle now and we'll go over kind of what we got inside. All right, so coming into the back of the 5th Gen Foreigner here, we have our drawer box. I probably spent about $370 on supplies to build this drawer box, but we absolutely love this thing. It's been a huge game changer for us for camping and overlanding. It's allowed us to stay neatly organized. It kind of tucks away all of our junk and kind of organizes it so we know where everything is. It also gives us an area to cut on. When this drawer pulls out, it has a flat surface and we can cut our food on there. So really happy with this. Um, up here, we have the Iceco VL45 Pro S. Jeez, I think I spent $800 on this I got a really good deal on the actual cooler and slide there was a combo deal and then I used a discount code to get a further discount on that so really happy with this so far it's a single zone seems to perform quite well our fridge here is powered by our EcoFlow Delta 2 um, this is a thousand watt hour power bank and it has nice fast solar charging so we can charge it up really nicely off of our Victron unit. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, this was about $900, so a little bit expensive, but it's gonna give us all the power we need and it saves us from a more expensive or more complicated dual battery setup. Being able to use our Victron unit and this just really simplifies things, cleans things up in the back. So really happy with this setup so far. Let's talk about the Victron. So back here mounted to this Molly panel, I have the Victron. DC to DC converter, it's a voltage booster. So it takes 12 volt power from my battery. It boosts it up to 24 plus volts. I think it's like 28 volts. And then we feed it in through the solar port on the EcoFlow Delta 2 Pro to fast charge this off the battery. So it's DC to DC charging. It eliminates the need for a dual battery setup and it's super simple to build. I have a video on my channel if you'd like to check it out. Yeah, the Victron unit back there, I think was like $150. And then all the wiring in that would probably be another $75 with the breaker and that sort of thing. I did mount that Victron unit back there to these Molly panels. These Molly panels are made by Maker. I got them off of Amazon and they are probably the best bang for buck Molly panels you can get. It's 200 bucks for both sides and it comes with a bunch of bags and that sort of thing. So I have a video on the channel for that as well. All right, so coming into the interior of the vehicle, I do have um, LED lights all throughout the interior. Those are by VLEDs. I bought the whole kit. So, you know, you got lights up here, you got some in the middle, there's some in the hatch, they're all the door lights. Those are VLEDs, they've been really good. They've held up really nicely. I think it's $128 for the full LED package for the interior and it's held up really well. So um, no complaints there. All right, so right here I have the car trim home head unit. This is the CTH, this is the number 10 version one. I think they have a V3 out now, a version three. Um, this was $585. It allows Apple CarPlay. I can play movies off of it. The audio quality is really nice. 
you know, it's got a couple of little quirks. Um, doesn't work well with polarized glasses and the hands-free calling. It uh, has its own built-in mic, so it doesn't function that great um, for the mic, but there is a workaround now, apparently. Um, contact Sev on Car Trim Home and he can get you sorted out with one of these and he'll have your back if there's any, any issues with it. Um, so yeah, really happy with that. Up top, we have the Victory 4x4 Dam or Dash Accessory Mount. Um, these go on sale for I think $120 regular they're about $150 and this thing's awesome um, it's mounted up I got all these ram mounts here so I bought three different ram mounts I probably spent about $150 on the ram mounts maybe a little bit less maybe $100 um, and that's allowed me to mount up the iPad so I can use offline maps, um, Gaia GPS. So that works really well. Um, I also have a radio mounted there. So this is a really nice little unit to have in your vehicle. Um, really helps you when you're overlanding to kind of keep things all organized and nightly, nicely mounted on your dash. All right, guys, so that sums up the full walk around of the fifth gen Foreigner build. I hope you guys found this video useful or at least entertaining. If you did, please like and subscribe. I hope to come up with a lot more videos and I always appreciate your guys' support. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye now.